Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Now, this is gonna be a... It's gonna be sort of a recap, even though I've decided that I'm not gonna only make recap videos, but, um... Uh, yeah. So, this is the second GTX of 80 Direct CO2, and I think I'm pretty much done with figuring out the card. And so I thought I was gonna make a video about this, because this is the first card that I was actually seriously trying to bench Sub-Zero using my face change. And um, the reason why this is in form of a recap video is just, uh, well, I was still figuring things out as I was running the card, and uh, there was just a lot of trial and error, and I just kinda wanted to have a bit of silence and peace while I'm trying to figure out how to use this thing. Um, for the next couple installments uh, that I might as well uh, record it, though I still don't entirely know how I'm gonna record it, but um, yeah, so if, if, if you think that there's only gonna be recap videos, now I'm gonna make some videos uh, where I actually just overclock things uh, and have the face change running since uh, in the poll you decided that, uh, yeah, the noise doesn't bother you. Though with that said, I have <laughs> edited the audio track to make the noise about only half as loud as it actually was in the original, but uh, I can just do that again. So, yeah. Um, anyway, GTX F80 Direct CO2. Uh, this is the second one. I have another one, which uh, I can just get that. So this is my other one. Uh, this is the better one, um, and it. Um, so you can see it's not insulated. It still has the back plate, and it has uh, these fire hazards hanging off of it. And just generally, the mods are a bit uh, less well done. Um, but yeah. So that other the Direct CO2 is. Um, I think that's the first graphics card I ever bought for just overclocking purposes. Um, that card is on ambient. When I was pre-testing the cards, that other one was better. The reason why I chose this one is, again, because of the first card I ever ran, uh, Sub-Zero, and there were some dangers involved, and I heard that you can quite easily break cards, like crack the dice, which is, that that's not fixable, the card is done. Um, if you're not careful, uh, that hasn't happened, the card still works which uh, is fine, That I, I really like that, because now I have the confidence to actually run cards that I do care about. This one I don't really care about. Um, well, now it has some history, now it has some significance, but before the card I literally bought this thing because it was listed as dead, and I wanted to turn it into an e-power. But before I did that, I tested the card and checked what was actually wrong with it, and I found out, uh, well, the card is actually fine, It's there's nothing wrong with the card. So, I just had the card sitting around, not really know what to do with it, because, uh, like, turning a working Direct CO2 into an e-power is kind of a waste, if you ask me. Um, so I just sat around, I didn't really know what to do with it, but then I, when I got the face change, I was, hey, this is a nice card, this is not gonna be, like, VRM limited, like a reference card if I really push it sub-zero. Um, so I thought, hey, I'm gonna prep this one for face change overclocking, and that's exactly what I did, and the final result you see right here. So, um, I think let's go over the, uh, the, uh, card, yeah? So, um, there is three main voltage mods on the card. Um, they're all kinda on the front, but also kinda on the back. Um, so the most important one is, of course, core voltage mod. Um, can see right here. Um, the core voltage mod is using a 20 kilo ohm potentiometer, which, uh, I have routed through this screw hole to the back. Uh, core is this one. Uh, as you can see, all my mods also have a switch, which you can use to just turn them off. Um, and yeah, so this is a 20 kilo ohm potentiometer, and then I just go to ground on one of these capacitors here. Same for this one. This is also a 20 kilo ohm potentiometer, also with switch, and this is for the memory. So this one goes right here. And yeah, same thing, 20 kilo ohm switch also on this uh, ground spot on this capacitor right here. And then the third mod, which is the newest one, um, 
this is a PEX rail or display. It, it, it has different names depending on who you ask. Uh, some call it PEX, some call it PLL, some call it display drive. It's uh, I call it the PEX rail. Um, yeah, so this is actually not an overvolt mod, this is an undervolt mod. Because on these Fermi GPUs like the GTX 580, um, I've seen, or like also been told, but I've seen it firsthand also, that if you undervolt this rail, you tend to get more core clock out of the card. Um, we'll get to that again, but um, previous in my previous benching and from what I've seen other people do, undervolting this rail, which is how this is implemented, uh, also with switch again, um, but this is a 500 kilo ohm potentiometer. I would have used a 200 kilo ohm if I had one, but uh, I only had uh, like 50k and then 500k, and 50k was too small, so I used the 500k. Still work fine, but like the control is a bit more rough than you would want. Still works fine though. Um, and uh, yeah, so those are the mods. Um, fairly standard, just potential, like literally just feedback pin, potentiometer, and then to ground uh, with the switch. The overworld mod, instead of to ground, just goes to the output of this uh, PEX rate right here. So that's how you do an undervolt mod. Instead of ground, you just go to the output. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I also briefly thought about um, cap modding the card. So as you can see, I removed the backplate from this one um, because I, I found some, I think these are M2 uh, nuts that I used to screw the heatsink into. I am losing a bit of um, heat sinking from the backplate because there is actually a thermal pad for the VRM here, but VRM temperatures were fine. Um, and by removing the base plate, I uh, backplate, I mean, I don't, uh, don't just have access to the inductors here, which is how I got my voltage measurements. I didn't hook anything up to behind the core, um, because I don't didn't really know how to implement it, so I only got the uh, voltage at the VRM, which is quite a bit higher than what you actually get at the core. Um, but, um, well, like, it's, yeah, it's less fine data that you get, but uh, it, it's still, like, you, you pump more voltage, you get more voltage into the core. So, yeah, uh, I could have done something behind the core, but the thing is I use a um, retention bracket on the back to mount the card, and having a wire runoff here uh, under that bracket would like f make it really hard to mount. So I decided against that and just uh, use the inductor voltage reading. It's, which is, yeah, it's it's fine. It's just like it's a bit higher here than there. So you just have to keep that in mind. Um, and yeah, I also thought of uh, cap modding. So you could like I could have added a bunch of motor ceramics to the memory behind the core. I could have just stacked another row of uh, through holes right here. Uh, I also decided against that because, well, the output filter is already pretty good. Like for Vico, that there's already a pretty substantial output filter, and for the memory, um, that there's not gonna be that big of transients there, so you can just like bump the voltage a bit more on the memory, which uh, is basically what I ended up doing anyway. Um, and then the final mod is just the card is plastic dipped to insulate it. Um, this card actually had three separate layers of Plastidip, which is where that orange comes in. So I first had a clear layer of Plastidip for the first session. I ended up pulling that off because I uh, implemented, like I didn't have this mod back then, so I pulled that off um, to put this mod on. And then I uh, got some orange Plastidip because um, the clear one is kind of running out. And I wanted to test some new colors, like because I, I used to have black Plastidip, which was okay, but it didn't really look that great. The clear one is pretty nice for seeing like what's under the plastic dip. It's also good for seeing, um, you can kind of see here how it's slightly pulling off the card. It's not attached to every place. That does happen. Uh, the clear one is pretty good for seeing that. But I also wanted to, well, I just wanted to try a new color. I, I, uh, I saw some orange stuff for sale. I, I got that, but sadly the orange stuff is, um, not usable. You can see here there's like tears forming in it and just generally the orange stuff is just yeah worse. It, it doesn't really form a good strength uh, layer 
um, the way that the black and the clear stuff does. So I ended up ordering another can of clear, and now I have orange stuff that I don't know what to do with, because uh, if you go to the community section of my channel, you can see what this looked like. Um, it just had, like, tears all over it, so it, you can't really use it to insulate. So I pulled the orange stuff back off where I could. I left it still on here because that, like, the vault mod came. I didn't want to remove the vault mods, so I just kind of cut the uh, orange stuff off and then just put another layer of uh, clear on it. So that's how the card is insulated. And those are basically all the mods. So, for how I'm actually running the card... Um, so the phase change is at around minus 50. Um, depending on how long you run it, because the uh, compressor uh, on the phase change gets kind of hot, and the hotter it gets, the less powerful it becomes. So if you bench for like an hour or so, your peak temperature is going to be at minus 45 instead of minus 50. Um, and then when the card is like at really high voltage and fully under load, you might also go up another 5 degrees. Um, but you shouldn't really go under minus 40, like it, it should stay under that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty cold, like... Uh, a lot colder than any kind of water chiller would do, uh, as far as I'm aware, at least. Um, and for the voltages, the memory I ran at basically 1.7 volts all the time, the core at 1.45, and then for a final run at 1.47. Again, that's at the VRM, the actual voltage in the chips is gonna be slightly lower. And then for the PEX rail, um, stock is uh, 1050 millivolts. I brought it down to 950 millivolts, which on ambient should have helped, but um, actually this mod didn't do anything for me. Like it didn't help any. Like that, that no difference. It didn't make any difference. And also I've been told that sub zero, you might actually want to overvolt this rail, which well I I would have to implement it in a different way, like this wire would have to go to ground instead of this output, like to the other side of that capacitor, because it's sort of to the positive side. Um, so I might still test that, but I don't, I don't, like, yeah. Like the thing is, I got pretty good results with the card already. Like I, I, I got better results than I thought I would get, because the card in pre-testing is pretty much the worst, um, which is why it, yeah, didn't really do anything with it, because it, it just didn't do really well in pre-testing. So, um, yeah, so I primarily ran Fire Strike with the card, and uh, uh, there is one HW bot result that uh, I'm eyeing to, uh, that I was eyeing to beat with the card, um, and that was, not in terms of score, I was still testing the, the i5 motherboard, so I'm not gonna get it beaten in score, but I wanted to match the clocks. And I got pretty close to that. Not quite there, but pretty close. So, that HW bot result is 1230 megahertz core and 2680 megahertz memory. Now, what this card ended up at was 1205 megahertz core and 2640 megahertz memory. So, yeah, 40 megahertz lower memory and 25 megahertz lower core than the best non-LN2 result on HWBot for Firestrike. That is. For 3D Mark 11 there's quite a lot more results, um, but for Firestrike that was the best result that was not using liquid nitrogen. And uh, yeah, I got pretty close to that, and um, I don't think I can upload any of the scores I got because my CPU that I was using here was so slow. But um, yeah, like... I can I can just rerun the card with my actual test bench and then it should work much better. Um, but yeah, so in the end, what the card achieved is still better than I thought. I thought this was gonna get stuck in like the 1150 range, um, which it kind of did for a bit. Um, but then I was able to push past that over 1200 megahertz, and the memory also got over 2600. Which is um, why I like this card a lot, because this card did 2600 mem as well. They both have the same memory, they both have 1 gigabit Samsung e -Di. Um This did 2600, lo over 2600 actually, I think 2675 at peak, just with cold water. 
So if I run this one, sub zero, this should probably definitely make it there because this core also ran like 1170 on cold water, which is not that far off the um, 12 or five that this one peaked sub zero. <laughs> um, so yeah, I might rerun the other directs here too. I I still have the lightning, but the lightning is, as I said in a previous video, probably dead. Um, like it, it, it was the sketchy one that always needed a lot of mounting pressure and at some point just it didn't work anymore, like no amount of mounting pressure made it work again. So I think that cut might actually be done, like the BGA might just be destroyed at this point. I have another lightning that I've actually never really seriously benched because I mostly keep that as a display piece. So I don't know if I might run that one. Um, or I might just run a completely different card. My, I might try a Kepler or maybe an AMD card. Um, basically this is laying the groundwork for all the other cards that I'm gonna run with this. Um, because this was the test run, and the test run went really well. Like, um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it it, it it went pretty well. Um, I'm quite satisfied with how where I got the card. Um, and um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna keep this one around for now, or uh, well, from now on, for potential reruns. Um, though, like, as I said, this is, like, basically every other 580 I have is superior to this one, because it just isn't that great. Um, the core is not that great, and on M, like, the, yeah, on Ambient the memory wasn't that great either. I got it pretty high in Sub-Zero because it's E-Die, and E-Die just scales with voltage and cold, like, just goes up, just go fast. And that's what it did. Um, so yeah. Uh, that's basically the um, recap on on this card right here. Uh, I I had a lot of fun with this. Um, yeah, I, I I had a lot of fun with this. Much much better than my um, clusterfuck that was uh, dry ice. Because um, I actually also ran this card with dry ice, but with no mods, not even insulated. I just pre-tested the pot with this card on dry ice. Um, so, yeah, th this, like, the phase change is, was, was a very, very good investment, because that's just so easy to use. Um, so, yeah, uh, I can't really say when or if you're gonna see more of this card, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, th I'm, I'm quite satisfied with what the card did. Um, I also really like how it turned out, like, okay, this orange stuff is kind of ruining the aesthetic, but before... <laughs> Before I had the orange coat on it, this looked pretty well. Like the, uh, okay, I could have cut down this part, but like the vault mods are nice and tidy. They have all their switches, they have their uh, turning knobs, so I don't need to use a screwdriver. It's all nice and neat, there's no like, it, it doesn't look like this octopus thing, basically. Um, and the insulation, apart from this, the insulation didn't really completely ruin the aesthetic of the card. Um, so yeah, I like. I like how it turned out also visually, um, except that the thermal paste just like smeared everywhere. But uh, yeah, so I can't really say what I'm gonna do next, Sub-Zero, um, like eventually I wanna bench everything I have, Sub-Zero, but I don't know which, which card is gonna go next, maybe an AMD one, yeah I could go for my 7950. I think I'm gonna go for my 7950 next, um, because that one has a really good core, um, and just like, yeah, I wanna bench a AMD card cold, because um, now I've done NVIDIA, so I guess I uh, it's time I learn how to AMD Sub-Zero. And that will probably also be on the uh, normal test bench again, not the i5 thing, so the scores I get might actually be good and uploadable to HW board and not, uh, like, basically the scores I got with the i5 were 1000 points lower than they should be. Or more like, if I had a good CPU, I would basically get a thousand points added to my total score. So, <laughs> yeah, using that i5 makes this very, very uncompetitive. Unless you go after GPU score. GPU score on this was fine. Uh, I think... I don't know if it was my peak. I definitely did get a 70, uh, tw 
7200 GPU score, but I think I got something higher than that. I can't say what exactly, 7500, 7600 maybe. Uh, I saved the results somewhere. I could look through them. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of getting to get scores, but mostly I was just trying to get the card clocked up properly, like to a level where you would say, oh yeah, that's that's on phase change. And I think I, yeah, I think I managed that. Um, so, yeah, I think there's not really anything more to say. I've crossed 20 minutes already. Um, so, yeah. I guess thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, rambling video about this card here and nothing much happened in it. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna try to make videos where I just overclock things uh, and, and, and record the process where I then can actually talk about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and what I'm hoping to happen. Um, so yeah, um, I'm gonna try to make such a... I, I, as I said, I don't exactly know how I'm gonna make them yet. But I, I do want to do videos like that. So I guess uh, I see you then. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And until next time, goodbye.